Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Real Talk. Today, my guest is James Cox. Hello, everyone. Did I mute it in time? Welcome to another oh. episode of Real Talk. Today, my guest is James Why has Cox. that happened to me? Hello, everyone. Okay, it's muted now. See? That's like my normal intro. <laughs> I can't figure out how to not do that. Okay, now we're ready. Okay. Today, my guest is James Cox. James is a leader in the hashtag I am a creator community. I have been involved with the I am creator community for a little over a year now. And I've met a lot of wonderful people, built a lot of really cool friendships. And I still can continue, continue to engage with James throughout the year. And today, I am happy to have him here to talk on the topic of self-motivation, self-esteem, and I believe that James has a lot to offer on that topic, so I'm going to put the stage on him. How are you? I'm really good today. Good. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me on your channel, for us to have a uh, talk. I greatly appreciate you, and I greatly appreciate everybody that's coming to the live stream. I greatly appreciate everybody that is... Uh, part of the hashtag I'm a creator community that is really paying it forward to others. Of course, you have to get your own house in order first, uh, because uh, if you're not helping yourself, if your own house is not in order, you really can't help anybody else. So um, it's a pleasure being here today. I greatly appreciate you uh, invite me on your show. Yeah, I'm really happy to have you. I mean, I probably wouldn't have the show unless I had people like you that were continuing to encourage me this past year. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely try to do that. And, uh, you know, um, there are some people that don't seem to have motivation in their lives. And the only way that they can overcome that is obviously, you know, from themselves, because it all starts, you know, within here. It's, you know, it's, it's the thinking. It's, it's the thought process behind it all. Yeah, I think you and I both know how important a positive mindset is. Uh, but how did we get there? Were, were you always a positive person? Um, not really. Uh, I think a lot of it comes from you've got to have you, you've got to bring your own self-esteem up. You've got to be you've got to think about yourself and what you want to do and then obviously you have to act act upon it and if people are being negative towards you uh, best thing to do about that in my opinion is to cancel those thoughts out because it's not what people think about you it's what you think about yourself um how can i put this so years and years and years ago I didn't really have high self-esteem. And I think it's a lot of it is our environment that we're brought up in. Mom and dad were always arguing. Mom came from a broken relationship. You know, she got divorced. Dad's first wife died. They got together and had me. So we had, you know, brothers and sisters from both sides. And there wasn't really any love there. It, to me, it, it, you know, it just didn't seem that. Mom and dad were always arguing about money. Dad wanted to spend his money uh, in the bar, play um, slot machines. And of course, when you don't have parents that support you and bring you up that way, supportive. I mean, I, I wouldn't say they both did not support me uh, like, you know, financially. I, you know, I got clothes and stuff like that. I went on vacations. But um, those vacations were very they were very like seldom where both parents were there in fact i can only remember like maybe a couple um as always like if we went overseas to europe it was always mom and my mother always said to me because i was bullied at school she said you have got to learn to live yourself you uh, you've got to learn to love yourself sorry you've got to learn to love yourself you've got to have confidence in yourself that you can you can do this right you could you you could do it and she explained that as a child she was bullied also and 
um i guess it just it, it just like i said you're a product of your environment and so for years and years and years it's sad to say that james didn't know how to learn how to love himself and i suffered with bouts of depression uh, unhappiness i don't like to use the word de depression i think it's a clinical word right i think it's a i think unhappiness is it, it's it's a depression is a very good way for doctors to sell you drugs to put you on drugs to put you on medication and um i think there's better you know medications for the self uh but it all starts to you know with believing in yourself so here i was um 40 i think 2012 so what would that be 2012 around about 2012 to 2013 so this is only like what um five six years ago something like that seven years very ago new. Max. yeah yeah very recent uh my girlfriend janine you know she gave me this book what's that this book is called how uh to be your own best friend it's by two psychoanalysts. It's questions. Two psychoanalysts in this book, uh, Mildred Newman and Bernard Berkowitz, are being questioned by somebody called Gene Owen. How and it's to a very, be your own huh? best friend? I'm typing how, it in the chat. Yeah, how to be your own best friend. Okay. The introduction actually is pretty amazing because the introduction – that they use is by somebody that uh, it is is in there uh, Thoreau, and he says, uh, when, "Well, it says here it says when Thoreau remarked that most men live lives of quiet desperation, he could not have foreseen how noisy that desperation would become. Modern man may suffer like his forebears, but he did not suffer in silence." Our malaise is articulate. We talk about our troubles. More escape hatches may be open to us today, and we will eagerly jump the chute. Work has always been available. We can now take further refuge in infinite uh, varieties of entertainment or let a 747 remove us from the scenes of our discontent. But more and more, what's bothering us is up for discussion. And this book, you know, hmm. it, it raises some valid questions. Who wrote the about, book, James? It, it's written by these people. By um, It's uh, Mildred Newman, Bernard Berkowitz, and Gene Owen. And it's a conversation with two psycho, psych, psycho analysts. But this wasn't, you know, this wasn't the magic pill in itself. This basically led me down a rabbit hole. Because then I went on the internet and started like finding out things about how do you, how do you, you know, how do you learn to love yourself? How do you get motivated? What do you have to do? And everything starts with a thought, obviously, because thoughts become things, and where there's an action, there's a reaction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think I've said this on live streams before. If I'm hungry, if I think I'm hungry, if I think I'm hungry, or if I think I'm thirsty, right? I then go through a process. Well, what do I have to do in order to get a drink? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I have to tell myself, okay, well, you know, and this is in the subconscious. It's not in the conscious. It's in the subconscious because the subconscious basically is what we have learned, what we have been programmed to um, believe what is real. Everything that we have grown up with around us, you know, people telling us certain things, that's what's in our subconscious, right? And so if you're living in a house where it seems to be poverty stricken and, and people say, oh, well, we can never afford that. We can never do that. You can never do that. And if you've been told as a child, you'll never be anything. You're a loser. You're never going to do anything. You're never going to achieve anything in your life. Then, of course, that's in your subconscious. And you're going to feel down and out and unhappy. And that's what is happening. Yeah. So you have to think differently. 
right? Because thoughts become things and thoughts become motivation and thoughts become, you know, whatever it is that you want to achieve. And, yeah, there's uh, that. Have you ever seen Help? The movie Help? Help? No, I haven't. There's a line in there where the the nanny keeps telling the little girl whose mother is just not loving and doesn't, you know, very neglectful to this child. And she tells her every day, I can't remember the line now, but it's something you, you is smart, you is beautiful, you is strong or something. And she tells this little girl, she makes this little girl say this over and over and over. And as the movie progresses, the girl gets to be more stronger and more positive because She's hearing that positive affirmation every day and she's making the child say the affirmation back to her. Yeah. So there has to be a paradigm shift, right? Because you've got to shift all this negative nonsense, this BS that's been put on you, that's in there, right? From over the years, years and years and years and years and years. And it might just be, not be from you. It might be from your peers, your family, right? But you're thinking this. You're allowing other people's words manifest inside you, and they're in there, right? And um, so it's a paradigm shift. And if you change the paradigm, if you change your paradigm, you can change yourself. You can change yourself. So that is how I see this. So this this be down a you know rabbit hole of discovering things, watching YouTube videos, trying to figure out, you know, um, downloading audio, um, getting involved on websites, and then being inundated with, you know, hundreds of emails with yeah. information and then digesting that and, dis and, and deciding for myself. Yeah. I've and heard you say, to I'm going to show you how great I am. I am the greatest and whatnot. I yeah. believe that of myself as well. Sometimes yeah. when people don't believe that in themselves and they hear, I'm going to give an example here, hear you, and I'm sure you've taken beef from this, shouting out how a great lot. you are. A lot, a um, lot of beef. When I first heard you saying that, because I I have empowerment within me as well, so I, it's, you know, it doesn't affect me to hear you say that. But I'm also realizing that when you're saying that on YouTube and you're saying that, you're looking at the camera. <laughs> You're telling yourself, I'm going to show you how great I am. You're not really shouting it to other people. You're telling it to yourself. That's how I, I perceived it. I'm telling it to myself, but I'm also telling it to the people that are watching this. You're leading if by they, example. If they want to be great, tell yourself, I am the greatest. I'm going to show you how great I am. Right. And you have to be positive within yourself. And that is what I'm telling people. But I've took, you know, I have to think it's taken the wrong way because it's it's looked upon as boastful. And you're not, you know, we're taught not yeah. to be boastful about ourselves. Be humble, right? But yeah. I understand because I think people need to perceive that from you, from your particular channel, that you're trying to lead by example. You're not saying you know, you're not trying to be boastful and bragging about it. You're trying to lead by example and show someone how to lift yourself up, how it's to believe it. in yourself. Exactly. It's an affirmation for the self and to give to others too, right? And and it all starts with I am, right? Because at the end of the day, you're born into this world. And realistically, if nobody's going to help you, the only person that you've got to help is yourself. And of course, you you can pay it forward, and that's as what you know. What the whole hashtag I am a creator philosophy is all about. It's all about paying it forward. There's many people here, Angel Domingue in the live stream. Yeah, let's go ahead and acknowledge those who are here. I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm going to back up the chat just a bit. All right, we have Angel Munez, Studio Geek, Emmanuel Gaffey, The Soulless Trench and walker fam ability mom of two vlogs linda's house of chill angel dominique and brock next welcome everyone thank you for coming and joining us if anyone has any questions for myself or james please make sure you tag us so that we can see it and we just had michelle uh, join us casey how are you thank you for joining us 
But yeah, I, I'm curious, James, 2012, you're right. It's very recent. I only met you a year ago. Uh, is that when you met Janine in 2012? That is true. Yeah, I, uh, I met Janine, uh, came up here to North Carolina. And uh, it might have been a little bit later, actually, that um, you met her in North Carolina or you both came to North Carolina. I met her. Um, well, she actually came down to Florida and then I came up to North Carolina. But uh, I think it was 2014, actually, that she gave me the book. And. Um, I want to say this. Okay. Listen, I'm, I'm by no means a guru on this. Right. And I'm still I'm still working on myself and I still find myself slipping. Right. Because I allow myself sometimes, as you've probably seen. Right. We're not going to get into names or anything like that. I, I do slip. I'm a human being. I'm not perfect and nobody is, right? Yeah, and, we're and all think, faced with diversity and negative and, and things that right. happen in our life. I mean, we are. It's, I've done right. it myself, yeah. Right. So, you know, we can do this to the best of our, our ability, but sometimes, you know, there is that uh, time when um, – the ego, the ego kicks in. That's what's doing it. And you want to like say something back and sometimes you do. And then one thing leads to another. And then, you know, it's like the bully in the, in the playground, you know, they're bullying somebody and what happens? Kids form a circle, right? Kids form a circle and everybody's going fight, 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 fight. Of course, nobody's the best thing to do would be somebody to jump in and, and break it up. And all the people that are standing around cheering the fight on sure. to get in between the two and say, don't you understand this is wrong? <laughs> That's right. Why yeah. are you fighting? <laughs> what, what, what are you doing here? But, but we don't, most human beings don't, they, they, they want this, right? They want this. They don't understand that this is something, this is so caveman. It's so, you know, brutish. Yeah. Right. I have another book for you and it's actually ironically the book of James, but um, <laughs> the book of James in the Bible deals with these five things that, that you're mentioning. Um, but there's a book based on that called this changes everything. It's called this changes everything. And it's, it's all based on five principles through the book of James, but it, you know, one is like the tongue is fire. And it talks about um, how a boat is controlled by a rudder and a, um, the mouthpiece of a horse. You control the entire beast with the mouthpiece and how strong our mouth is and how we, you know, need to learn how to control it, especially when we are within a, so much emotion. I uh, personally don't care much about the mouth, people running their mouth, because I think some people may say, well, you can be verbally abused. And yes, uh, if the noise level, if the noise level is rising, but if you can control your thoughts, if you can control, you know, what people are saying to you, right? Your own thoughts. So those thoughts are you entering your contradicting head. yourself, though, because you just said you had to you have to speak so that your thoughts can hear it. So, I mean, you can't. No, I'm talking things, so it's. I'm talking about other people. Right. So, so you're just if, muting the other people, but you can't mute yourself. Yeah. You have, you, well, there's no point in muting, muting yourself because you need to be telling yourself that right. you are better than this, right? You are, you are better this. You are better than this. You are above this. So, you know, you have to tell yourself, I am above this. I am better than this. I am not going to allow myself to be subject to this, right? I am not going to allow what people are saying to me. So what I'm trying to say here is, right? It's interesting when you- when... Other people's, other people's thoughts, right? And this is a great way to, to understand this. Other people's thoughts are no business of mine. Other right. people's thoughts are no business of mine. The only thing that it can get a little bit bad 
is when people start screaming and shouting this and obviously you know it's the noise really then the loudness being around it that i think is the abuse that is where the the verbal abuse right is verbal abuse because you do have a choice you know you can walk away from somebody that is shouting verbal abuse to you or saying verbal abuse to you well, but if they're around you and if huh you can't really if you're a child well, well we're talking about you we're talking about i'm talking about adults here right yeah everything you do is a choice everything that you do is a choice you choose if you want to be in a relationship with somebody you can choose to leave that relationship you could choose basically what job you want, right? Don't complain about it. Go and get another job somewhere else. Everything is a choice that you choose, and you have to accept responsibility for that, right? And and you know, people say, "Well, I can't get another job." You know, I don't, I don't have this. I don't have that. Well, work on it. And th this is what something that I was going to move into with with motivation, right? I love my job, right? I love my job. I really do. I love saying to people when they come into walmart welcome to walmart how are you doing today i am doing great how are you i'm awesome sauce and i do i say it and they, and they start laughing i had one gentleman i had uh, i had one gentleman uh say to me uh just the other day actually i said uh, welcome to walmart how are you doing today he says i'm good and how are you i said I am awesome sauce. And he says, I love that. That that that's made my day. You saying that. He says, that's awesome. I love that. Thank you. That that made his day. Yeah. Studio so, Geek. I I saw earlier Studio Geek was surprised that you were or had a moments of depression in your life because you seem so happy. Oh yeah. I mean, listen. I, I again I, I really don't like that word depression because it puts people in boxes mm -hmm. right it puts people in boxes that that kind of stuff right it puts people in boxes and realistically pigeonholes people um in, depression listen this is just my opinion depression may be um in your in anybody's opinion a real thing i think it's in my opinion it's unhappiness right it's unhappiness that's what it is and life can be up and down right up and down up and down and up and down but when things don't seem to be going the way that you uh want them to go uh then you have to in, you know in my opinion again adopt a paradigm shift because it's all in the subconscious it's all in the subconscious all so are there practices that you do daily to get to this when i wake up in the morning i do generally uh lay in bed you know and i do suffer from uh body pain you know i've been told that i have l l4 and l5 bulging discs which my pain is not as uh much anymore since i've lost weight and again thanks to janine you know she told me for years uh you are heading for uh, diabetes and all this weight that you're carrying. And that was 270 pounds because I didn't believe what she was telling me. I did not believe what she's telling me. She said, you're heading for diabetes. You're heading for problems later on in, in life. You don't exercise. Uh, you you know, there's a lot of stuff that you don't do. And uh, you do hush pounds if you shave that beard off. <laughs> Oh, I, I wore this beard because I know how much you love it today. Yeah, I, yeah it's, it's about to drive me insane. No, just, love, just I know you I love, just know how good uh, looking you are without it. So that's I know, why. I know you love this beard. And, and that's that's the mother in law kicking in, in you. <laughs> no, that I, I like I like to look at people that are attractive and you uh, make yourself look less attractive with that beard, in my opinion. <laughs> right. But you see, my thoughts on that is I am the most handsome, beautiful human being on this planet. <laughs> that's and, and that's and that's that's another thing I want to touch on. Insecurities, right? Yeah. People being insecure, right? Um, and Here's, an, here's another thing. It's in the subconscious. Madison Avenue, Madison Avenue has done an amazing thing, right, 
to make women and men too feel very insecure right billboards with stick sure. skinny women with nice dresses makeup yeah. on right hair done by you know one of these hair salon hairdressers yeah uh, makeup artist avenue but all of the filters on social media as well but it's, it's madison avenue it come, it's all this advertising all these ideas they come from madison avenue that's who has got people thinking that they need to be like this right that's that's where the advertising uh, agencies that come up with all these slogans, right? Uh, about you know, uh, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Right. By the way, that's not a pay, paid advertisement for uh, Maybelline. But you know these catchphrases and all this stuff yeah. to sell you to think that you are basically not attractive that you are not beautiful that you are fat that you need to lose all this weight right you are being programmed you are being told it's in the subconscious again right and you know while other people are doing this to you and you're allowing this in and you feel that you need to put all this makeup on and you need to be you know glamorous and look uh beautiful you yeah. know, it's all it to me. It's just all superficial. Yeah, I, really my is. husband. I say I say things negative sometimes about my husband. I'm not about me to my husband for getting ready to go out. Oh, I hate what I'm wearing. Oh, I hate my hair today. I hate this. And he'll be like, "You need to stop saying that because I'm going to start thinking it." <laughs> and that's true. And it dawned on me. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I got to stop saying all this terrible stuff about myself." Um, but I mean, it 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 is very important to speak positively and to tell yourself how wonderful and beautiful you are, especially for yeah. women, I think. Nowadays. You got to, you, yeah, you've got to, you've got to be your, you know, you can be, people can be their own worst critic. And if you're saying, does this dress make me look fat? Does these shoes make me look fat? You know, you know, you, that's, that's not the thing that you should be saying to yourself. No. You, know? you should be wearing things that make you comfortable, right? Why do you want to be in a dress or a pair of pants that are, you know, you can hardly move in, right? What does it matter? Yeah. What does it matter? Um, we we truly do become what we think. And if if you keep telling somebody, right, a partner, you are lazy, you are lazy, you don't do anything, you're good for nothing, you know what's going to happen? They're either going to walk gonna, away or they're going to believe that. Yeah, they're just going to become it. There's a reason why they're like that. And that's because they're thinking that and, you know, they're going to become it. You know? So. Yeah. You, we, we truly, I mean, uh, you know. I, you know, you can't say that to your child either or your college student that comes home and lays on and sleeps on your couch all weekend. You're lazy, good for nothing. You need to do this or that, you know. Instead, it's. Are you comfortable? You know, is there anything I can get to you? You know, you look you look so peaceful here. I don't know. You you have to figure out a way to change the way you're speaking to people. Well, if you if you want if you want to get them off the couch, if you want to get them out, say, "Hey, come on, drive me to the store," you know. Yeah. Yeah, you you have to you can't throw negative, hateful things at them. Yeah, you you'll find that the most successful people, they be either figured this out like I have done late on in life or they've had parents that have been behind them in everything that um, that they've wanted wanted to do and they've encouraged them and they've put them in the situation where the child wants to be something so you know if the ch if the child wanted to be a soccer player or the child wanted to be an american football player or a wrestler or you know anything that they wanted to do the the parents will take them and do that to them they've encouraged them they've you know they've they've got them that what they needed in, in and been positive and motivated the child and of course you know kids go through phases they get bored with things you know they want to do this now but then in a year's time they no longer want to do it 
right? And it may be for certain reasons, you know, like, so like if you're taking is you need to find positive people in your life in order to get yourself from a negative state to a positive state. You need yeah. positive influences. Yeah. And for you, that was Janine. She she sent me down the right path, first of all, with the motivation stuff about learning. Well, my mother always told me, you've got to learn to love yourself. You've got to find some confidence. You've got to, you've got to learn. Did she show and you how? No. That, well, maybe she did. Uh, and I don't know if it was me having the lack of understanding or maybe how she was saying it and doing it, right? Because I think it needs to be taught. You can't just tell a child, you need to love yourself. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Why do you care? I, you, have to you have to teach a child how. Absolutely. Absolutely. You do. So how, what do you do? I mean, I, I know what I do, but I mean, what do you suggest? I suggest that if a child doesn't um, feel loved or feels low in self-confidence, obviously they've got to practice affirmations, right? Yeah, uh, I think or, that, that's a great first step. I think getting up in the morning and saying something or looking in the mirror and saying, wow, you look great today. <laughs> you, you, yeah, <laughs> you, you were asking today. me. So. You were asking me, so. Yeah, what is your yeah. habits? What do you do? Okay, so I wake up in the morning <laughs> and, I, and lately because I've just I've just changed my eating habits, um, trying to not eat late at night. So when you see me, you know, in the car eating food and it's all in my beard and on myself and stuff like that, which I laugh at when people are making comments <laughs> about this because I really don't care. I really do <laughs> not care. I don't. I mean, the more of it that's in my beard and on me and people are making comments about it, right? That's, 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 you know, yeah. creating. And I people. know how strongly positive you are. And that's why I have fun bantering with you, yeah. giving you trouble, because I would never do that if I knew that you, you know, if it would affect you in a negative. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, when certain things happen, sometimes I, I have to like really, really, you know, get a hold of my thoughts and dismiss them because again, you know, other people's other people's comments to me is none of my business, right? And I I'll choose, I'll choose to I'll decide, right? I'll decide uh whose comments I'm gonna listen to and whose comments I'm not. It's you know, it's my thought process. It's not anybody else's. Yeah. And they Food read Forest them. has a great comment right now just based on that. Food Forest permaculture, permaculture. Permaculture. Is that Howie? Is that If you believe in the pain of words, then you can get hurt. If you don't believe in the pain of words, then the words cannot hurt you. Much love and respect. Flying back to my rom. Poof. <laughs> He's out. Very true. <laughs> very 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 true. Very true. Hello Gemma. And Welcome. And it's all about dismissing, right? It's all about. So you wake up. You were, you were, I got you off track again. You wake up. What do you do? Tell me. Tell me your habits. Okay, so I wake up. I look at the clock, and I say to myself, "Oh my goodness, look at it! It's five o'clock. I'm never going to get back to sleep because I'm on this new eating habits." Right? Um, Are you intermittent to, fasting? It is. It, it yeah. It is. It is intermittent fasting. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, as you know, I go live at 9.30 in the morning, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and 9 o'clock at night, and that's all Eastern Standard Time. But on my lunch, which is the 3 uh, p.m. Uh, live stream, uh, you, you know, you'll see me eating something. So when that's over, that's the last time on a work day that you'll see me eat anything. And the only thing that I put in my body after that is water. Right. And then I come home and I am really, really tired because obviously um, I think the, the body is, is still adjusting to this, um, is looking for some kind of a, a food source energy. I don't know. But I, you know, I just go and get in bed. That's why really you don't see me now uh, unless I've got a bit of energy on on. Um, on, on at night on social media. I'm, I'm in bed. I'm relaxing. 
I'm getting ready for my next day. But when I wake up in the morning, I tell myself this. I tell myself, it is a great day. I am so happy and grateful to be alive on this planet. And I look out the window and I say, you know, if it's raining, I say, it doesn't matter that it's, it's, it's raining. You know, I'm so happy that I'm alive and great things are going to happen in my life today. I'm going to meet some amazing people, be it in reality or, you know, on my live stream. I'm so appreciative of what I've got today. Right. And then when I get up out of bed and I go to the bathroom, I look at myself in the mirror and I say to myself, I really love you. You are the most beautiful, handsome human being on this planet. Now, of course, to some people, they're going to be saying, well, this is very narcissistic. I don't care. No, I don't I care think if you think. I think it's very wise. You know, I, I don't I don't care if the, you know, some people do think it's narcissistic. You know, I, I think that is another term that's overbroad and thrown around and banded around a lot. I believe in myself. Right. And I tell myself, I believe in you and you are going, I am going to achieve greatness today. Yeah. I am going to achieve greatness today. I am going to make people happy today. I am going to help people today. I am helping people. I am helping myself. You are. I love the I am statements because God told Moses his name was I am. So I mean, I think it's awesome because he we are we are made in God's image. So when you say I am, and when I hear I am, yeah, I I love it. Yeah, and I, I used I to tell, write uh, messages to my kids on their bathroom mirror so that when they got up, they had to read them, and I would write them in I statements. That's so great. They would, so they would, they would have to read it, and I I still do that from time to time. I need to get back to doing yeah. that. Yeah, I told myself that I am a go-getter and I will continue uh, to achieve my goals. And my goals, I don't know if you know, is I want to be doing this from home, right? I want to be what we're doing right now because I believe, I believe that I can help more people if I'm doing this from home. Yeah, I feel right? very grateful that I'm able to do it. I, I, yeah. what, that's my thing. I do the same thing. I wake up in the morning before I put my feet down. Thank you, God. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for this I, day. What do we have in store today? What am I going to do today? What can you use me for today? I feel fantastic. I want to help others feel fantastic. And that's what I say every single morning before I even get out of bed, before my feet hit the floor. And I, and I, also, I also tell myself that I'm grateful for having a roof over my head. I am grateful for having running water. I am grateful for having electricity. Have you I'm seen the video? It's a funny video about that. And they all wake up and everything's a present. The faucet is a present. It's like, like Christmas morning. They're like, oh, we have water. Yay. You know, no, I've, ne I've never so seen it. But I, you know, I tell myself that I'm grateful for all these things. I'm grateful that I have a, uh, a job. I'm grateful that I have money. I'm grateful that I have a car. I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful and, and I appreciate it. And I'm great. And I'm grateful for all this family that is here right now in the chat and many more that come to my live streams. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm grateful for those people. I'm grateful for everybody that is truly a hashtag. I am a creator community, um, member, right. And I'm grateful to everybody that practices the philosophy of the hashtag I'm a creator that goes out and watches people's videos in full, that likes those videos, that tweets those videos out, that add those videos to the playlist and hits the subscribe button and comments down below that they've done all that. I'm grateful for all those people that are spreading the message of the hashtag pay it forward, right? And I just I, I just think of try to think as much of, of, of positive things and tell myself. I am thinking positive today and positive and positivity and positive things are going to happen in my life, right? I'm throwing this out into the universe. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before on my live streams. The universe does not know anything different between positive and negative. But we, whatever we think is what we become. 
however we think is what we become. And if you keep telling yourself, I can't do this, I'm not doing this, you know, that's not possible for me, then that's what's going to happen. But if you if you look at if you try to find the positive in a negative and turn it around, if you think about how can I achieve this, how can I get the money? What do I have to do to get the money for that new car? What do I have to do to get a new home? You know, whatever it is that you want in life, how can I go and live in that country? You know, how can I how can I move from here to there? Right. And if you plan that out, and if you think about that, right, and you act upon it, you can do basically anything that you want. Again, I've brought this up again. I think again. that's all great and wonderful when you're a single person, but it's difficult when you have a family unit. You know, if you have a husband or a wife that has this great dream and they're going to make, they're going to do all these things to make this happen. There's obstacles too. There's, there's sacrifices. There's other things that you have to do to, you know, when you're a unit. It's, it's more difficult. What do you suggest? Abs absolutely. But if you both want the same things, then you, you come together and you work on that. If you don't, you know, want the same things, then obviously you have to work on uh, compromise, right? Compromise. You have to, yeah, you have to compromise. Yeah. Well, have you faced compromises or obstacles in these last four or five years? Oh, I've, I've uh, I, trust me. I've uh, I've uh, faced compromises and had to walk away from things. I had a business in England. Oh, really? Was what was that? Computers. I, I sold computers, IT equipment, and I was on my way to making millions. I was actually just starting to go into the uh, internet. I built a server room, put computers in it, and, um, you know, uh, was about to become an ISP as well. When was this? This was from 1993 to 2000. Oh, okay. What happened? I had to, I, I quit it because basically I only wrote, a, I only wrote a three year plan and it's my own fault. I didn't find, I didn't carry on. You, you've got to write your goals down and you've got to keep looking at your goals. Right. And that was the mistake. And that was something that I didn't know. I went from um, turning over one hundred and twenty five thousand pounds in my first year of business to two hundred and twenty five thousand, uh, two hundred and twenty five thousand pounds um, in my second year to seven point five. Sorry, two point two. Uh, yeah, two point two point. Two five million to seven point five million. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, it's a long time ago. But I was younger then, and uh, you know, but you know, you you got to you got to look at it and just and just look back. Yeah, I had, a, I had a computer company. I employed about fifty people. We built machines for people, bespoke systems. We sold hard drives, memory, CD-ROM drives. CDs, sound cards, everything that went into a computer, I sold that and I shipped it all around uh, the UK. And yeah. I actually had people that come from overseas and, and bought equipment from me too, because it was cheaper to get them and then fill out the tax form and claim the, the value added tax back on it, because all this stuff was so expensive in, in, their, in their country. So they made more money by coming and buying this stuff and and taking it back to their own country too. So you quit so, the business. Yeah. What did you do after that? You're about 30 ish years old around that time, right? Yeah, I, I quit the business. And uh, again, I, I gave my wife at the time, I gave her everything. I walked away from the well, relationship. I didn't realize you were married, James. Uh, listen, I've had two marriages. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yep. So Was this your second yeah. marriage? Uh, I'm not married to Janine. No, it, 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 she just. No, I there. mean that when when you left. This is my. This was my first marriage. Your first marriage. Okay. Yeah, and, but you know, sometimes you just got to do certain things because you can't let people destroy you, and that's what some people will try to do. So basically, you know, I I just gave everything away. I was being played by a system that most people seem to want to have. 
uh it do, you know it, it doesn't play fairly because it's all about making money off people and so i ended up just i ended up just walking away i said you want the house you want that car you want the business there you go have at it wow not, and did not, you move not, from the uk at that time no it was it was years later that i that i moved so that was your and first I, yeah. your first marriage hey, let me let me give people let me give people a little bit of advice here, right? Marriage is great if you think that you have got your ideal partner, but don't think that things can change in your life. Marriage is quick and easy to get into it, but it can take a long time to get out of it. So just be wary. And if you've got some stuff, if you've got things before you get into a marriage, you might wanna get a prenup signed if 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 it stands because you can right you and it's your own fault you can't blame the person you may be taken for a ride along the way right so uh bear in mind that bear in mind that marriage can be very very easy it's easy to run off to las vegas and get married that same day right by elvis or whoever mm -hmm. but uh trying to get out of that trying to get out of that marriage if the other person doesn't want to play ball right it could take a long time it could it could it can it could take a long time to to break those chains so the best thing to do in my opinion is that if you want to protect yourself i would get a prenup i would get them to sign it and if they you know if you if you're bringing more than what they are and you want to protect it i'd get that signed and um you know that's that's just my thoughts on it i don't think that in this day and age that marriage is necessary if two people love one another they're going to stay together they don't really you know it's just a piece of paper the state's involved in it now and um to to me i i i don't think it's necessary well obviously you're not married to janine i could see oh. why you would think that if you've had two failed marriages that would be very difficult that's like a whole nother real talk though we're not really here to talk about marriage, <laughs> but well, I know I'm, I'm just, I've been married I'm, 27 years. I know how I know how hard marriage is. <laughs> but so, but I'm I'm curious now. Okay, so in 2000, you're you're married, divorced. You're moving on. What'd you do next? I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out. I want to know like how you got to where you are, like this most incredibly positive man right now. And I'm I want to see how this all portrayed. Uh, again, I was on, I, I was, uh, you know, I was in the doldrums, right? I was unhappy. And then, um, you know, um, there was the, the fasting thing. I didn't believe in that. I came here and, you know, Janine was fasting and I was going and, you know, eating. And she, you know, she was telling me, I'm like, you know, and, and again, the subconscious mind, people telling you things. You've got to eat three squares a day. You've got to eat three squares a day. You don't. There's a uh, there's a video that finally woke me up that Janine wanted to watch. She has an Amazon Prime account, and we sat and we watched it, and it's called the Science of Fasting. Now, I don't believe in socialized medicine. However, uh, other countries, you know, uh, have these fasting clinics that have socialized medicine, and people that have got diabetes, asthma, high blood pressure that are on all these medications. They go to these fasting clinics, and in this uh, in this um, documentary, you know, these people go there because they want to get off these medications and they want to feel healthier. They want to feel better. So obviously, there's doctors on hand, and they're just given glasses of water, and the and the doctors are monitoring them, you know, their health and stuff like that. And eventually, these people get off these medications right and it's a great documentary if i i suggest anybody that wants to um you know consider fasting you know yeah check that but and so that was basically you know, have you ever studied me. the leptin levels and the hunger scale i i have not no i gotta be honest i haven't but um what That's something you should look into too because we all fast we all when we sleep we fast so there are hours and i'm talking i'm talking fast. about extended fasting I, I don't know if you remember i was doing 36 hour extended fast so my last meal would be uh and again it's it's thought 
You're telling people, people telling themselves, there's no way that I could go without food for all that time. Well, there's no way because you're telling yourself that. And that's what I was telling myself. Yeah. I was telling myself, right, this is not natural. My subconscious was coming forward and telling me, you've got to eat three squares a day. It was fighting with me with what Janine was telling me. And I was wrong. I was wrong. And I've proven that. I went from 270 pounds down to 188 pounds, right, in 25 weeks. 25 weeks, I lost all that weight. And you want to know something? I feel a lot healthier. I feel a lot better now losing all that weight and doing what I'm doing, right? And sometimes I do. I do fall off the wagon. I eat junk. Yeah. I eat junk and you've seen me on my live stream, but I'm, I'm getting back on it. And it's, again, it's, 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 it's all to do with stopping yourself. Right. I wanted to eat candy the other day at work. I was looking at Snickers. They've got some, they've got two new ones out. You know, this is not a paid advertisement. Again, we're not promoting yeah. Snickers bars here. Right. Snickers are satisfying. I, I was looking at them. They have a maple one yeah. and they have a peanut butter one. Right. And I told myself, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I don't need this. This is not something that I want to be putting in my body right now. Right. So I didn't. Right. And you know, you, you can slip if you allow the thought to process and, oh, yeah, you know, well, definitely. and, and they, they, they do put stuff in food that makes you think right that that mess with the endorphins and 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 you know the brain chemistry to make you want this right but you know like not long back about a, i think it's less than a month or maybe about a month ago maybe just over a month ago on my way home one night i couldn't decide this is before i started doing this eating eating that i'm on now i went and got mcdonald's and i ate that and it just did not taste right my body was telling it, my body felt poisoned my body felt poisoned and i'm like i can't I, i'm never going to eat this again never going to eat this again but when i eat clean clean food like chicken right if i bake chicken in the oven with some herbs and spices on it and i put it on uh some of janine's um sourdough pita breads with some cilantro and you know some other dressings and I eat that, my body feels a lot cleaner. My body feels a lot cleaner. Oh, yeah. I'm a firm believer in what we eat and how we feel. And I and I, I, I don't feel like nasty after it. I don't yeah. feel bad. I don't feel, you know, I just don't feel like I do. Like I feel like crap when, you know, I eat this stuff. Yeah. And um, I, I, I believe in the leptin levels and the brain tells you when to eat and how, how you should eat. And you have to tell yourself, am I really hungry? And that, and you'll, I bet if you, if you look into that, you'll, you'll just, dis, you'll discover how long you can fast. Because if you only eat fee, food as fuel, if you only eat when you are hungry, you'll probably fast even longer. Well, we could Google right now. What's the what's the longest time that somebody has gone without food, and you'll find that it's a very very long time. That yeah. Well, there's a scale. Eat. So there's there's a scale. If you have zero to five, and then there's ten. So you have to decide where on this hunger scale you are. So when you get right. to, you know, a six, that's when you need to plan your meal, get it in you. But if you wait until you're at a ten, you're going to go for whatever's in front of you, and you're just going to gorge. So if you follow a scale, like kids, I mean, when I was a kid, I, the streetlights came on. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm hungry. So I'd go in and I eat, I would go in and eat. Um, but as an adult, I always, you know, we get up and we think, oh, I got to eat breakfast. Oh, I have to eat lunch. Oh, I have to eat dinner. Oh, I need a snack. You know, but if you only eat when you're hungry, when you're truly hungry, you'll realize how long you can fast. All right, so I'm looking here. I just Googled it. What's the longest someone has fasted? And the first thing that came up, it's a link uh, it's to a YouTube video. And it says, in this video, Dr. Berg talks about the longest fast. A 27-year-old man named Angus 
uh, Barbareri fasted for 382 days and went from 456 pounds to a 180 pounds. His fasting was supervised with uh, vitamins, electrolytes, minerals, uh, nutritional yeast, potassium, and sodium. Yeah, I mean, there's all, I, for me as a Christian, fasting is a sin unless you're fasting to receive a diety message or some sort. Like we are supposed to eat, we're supposed to fuel our bodies. Um, but so it just depends on what you're doing it for. Right. You know? Yep. You, it, it depends what you want. If you believe that you want to lose weight, if you want to healthier, if, if, if that's what your belief is, that you want to be healthier and you want to lose weight because you, you, you know, you do know you in yourself that you're carrying too much weight around and you want to be lighter because you want to be able to move a lot better, which is what I wanted to do. And after yeah. seeing the science of fasting, right, you know, I was like, Oh my goodness, let me try this. And Janine was right. All those years of me not listening to her, right? <laughs> I I should have I, no, I should have listened to her. She was right. And yeah. I fasted and I fasted and we did 25 weeks. Uh, I think the first um the first I I get this all wrong way around each time. So I I don't remember. I think she started fasting a little bit before me. I started in January. She started uh in 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 uh December. And in January, when I started fasting, and I think I did 13 weeks, I think, up front, where I was doing three 36-hour fasts. So I would not eat from Sunday at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, from then, I'd go all the way through Monday until midday on Tuesday. So no food at all, all day Monday until 12 o'clock uh, on Tuesday. And then I'd eat from uh, 12 o'clock. Till 10 o'clock and then from 10 o'clock no food all the way through the night all the way through wednesday until thursday at uh, 12 o'clock and then i'd eat between 12 and 10. so i was doing three 36 hour fast no food but i was eating junk i was eating junk I was eating potato chips I wasn't drinking soda I, I don't really drink soda the only time i'll drink soda is when i'm burnt out on coffee if i'm going on a long trip long drive somewhere and i don't really want to stop i want to get as much driving done as possible and right. i get burnt out on coffee and i want that caffeine you know from something different right i, I need that bit of sugar to you know get in because i, I want to get and you know i don't really think that i want to do that now if i if i you know if i drive i don't i don't i don't think i want to do that but that's the only time i was doing soda and um so I was doing that and eating junk. I'd eat peanut M&Ms, you know, potato chips. And then when I went to doing, I think it was 12 weeks, I was fasting two days a week. They cut the fasting down to two days a week. And on the on the times that I was eating and the days that, days that I was eating, I was doing less than 30 grams of carbs. Enzo says I, he's getting hungry because you're talking about food. <laughs> say what? Enzo says he's getting hungry and animated adventure says they're hungry for chicken cheese shake chicken cheese steak and they're getting hungry listening to you talk about food <laughs> yeah well hey Enzo how you doing family show for GZ Rogue Gaming animated adventures um who else is in here studio geek Gemma's journey grace how you all doing welcome uh, I want to thank you for uh, coming to Miss Kathy's uh, and, and I'm grateful I greatly appreciate you all here uh, thank you for coming to Miss Kathy's uh, live stream and, and participating in this. I greatly appreciate you hey, all. Bottle caps. <laughs> Angel's caps still here, too. Yeah, hey, got, Angel Domingue, how you doing? Off, we got a little bit off topic talking about the fasting and everything. But in a way, it, you were the reason we it, did that is because we were talking about the mindset of telling yourself you can do something. It, it ties into being motivated. Motivation. Mm -hmm. Motivation and being dedicated to do it. Yeah. I can sing you a song if you want about dedication or motivation. They they even go both ways. They both both go both ways if you want. Sure, belt it out, buddy. All right. Motivation and dedication. Motivation is what you need if you want to be the best and you want to beat the rest. Dedication's what you need. Hey, that's good. Who wrote that one? 
You? I, I believe it was sung by somebody called Roy Castle over in England. He used to do record breakers. And uh, that is that is actually part of the song, Record Breakers, People That Break Records. I think it goes something like this. Dedication, dedication, dedication is what you need if you want to be the best and you want to beat the rest. Dedication's what you need if you want to be a record breaker. Yeah, that's the actual song. You amaze me how you can think of lyrics off the top of your head and just sing them. I wish I could do that. My husband has a song for everything and he he's really good with lyrics. It doesn't matter what the topic is or what we're doing, especially if we're arguing, he's got a song for it. And it just, it irks me sometimes because I'm like, I know why you're singing that song. Well, I'm just singing. <laughs> yep. Uh, and, you know, it, it, singing can make you happy, too. You can be happy singing songs. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a great way to get yourself motivated. Yeah. And your intentions, they have to be clear. And when your intentions are clear, the universe basically cooperates with you and you can accomplish anything that you want to do. You can accomplish anything that you want to do. So you're wanting to do this full time. You want to continue? Well, I, I am doing it full time because the amount of times that I live stream, you know, I, I, you know, I look at it as being full, full time. What I want to do is I don't want to do this full time in my car. I, I want to be able to do it here as you and I are talking right now. I want to be, I want to be doing it from here. That's what I want to be doing. Right. So, and, and you wanting to lead by example and help others do the same thing. If that's what they're any kind of goal that they have set, you're hoping to lead by example. What are, what are your plans um, when this happens? What are you going to do when you have all day to just sit like I do and just motivate people? <laughs> What's the plan? I'm going to motivate people. I'm going to do live streams. I'm going to make more videos. I'm going to, you know, do whatever's necessary. I'm going to make money. You said you, you I said that you, am a money magnet. I make yeah. money every day. Okay, but have you have you written down these plans? You said I only had a three year plan before. Have you started yeah. a new plan for the next? I, I've, I've I've got them written down. Well, that's good. Are you going to share that with us at all? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you wake up with gratitude. You're eating healthy. You've got your plan oh. written down. Yeah. An attitude of gratitude. That's what you've got to have. You've got to have an attitude of gratitude. Most definitely. Where is Janine in this plan? Oh, Janine's doing her own thing. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no sacrifices between the two of you have to be made or no compromises. We, we do our, we do our own thing, you know, um, and, and, and that's it. We just do our own thing. We're here together. We spend time together and we do our own thing. Well, but that's, that's as long as you both are on that same path and that's, that's what's important. Mm -hmm. Whose yeah. birthday is it? Oh, family ashore. Your, your son's birthday. Happy birthday to your son. Yeah, happy birthday to, hold on, let's see if I can remember his name. Uh, Georgie, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Georgie. Happy birthday to Georgie. Happy birthday to Georgie. Happy birthday to you. There you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It's uh, Remy's birthday coming up on the 12th. That's tomorrow, right? Or two days. Today's, what's today? Two more days. Well, happy birthday early to you, Remy. Yeah, happy birthday, Remy. Happy birthday to you, Remy Moore. Happy birthday to you, Remy Moore. And Angel, too. Angel, your birthday's coming up. I didn't know that your birthday was this month, too. 
I thought Angel already had a birthday. Didn't we celebrate Angel's birthday? I thought we did. You're talking about Angel Munez? Um, maybe it was Angel Munez that just had a it birthday. Was Angel, yeah, it was Angel Munez's, yeah. <laughs> Studio Geek says, Happy James Day. <laughs> Happy James Day to you. Oh Happy James Day. Oh, does anybody have questions for James? I know I've been trying to pull some personal information out. I'm not getting very good far with it, but I appreciate what you've been sharing. So yeah, there's, there's, there's a few things that I tend not to discuss because, you know, some people can try and use it and twist it and do all kinds of things with it. You know, uh, when you're a superstar like me, when you are the greatest, there's, you know, there's certain things that, you know, better not, you know, not discussed. Right. Because as well, you know, the past is the past. You can't change it. Things that have happened in your life. There's no point in rehashing it. Right. But the future, the future, with. the future, right? The future is not guaranteed. You've only got the now. So you have to embrace and enjoy the now. Because, you know, tomorrow, you may not be here. It's a sad fact. Because I get that, though. But the past is important to be able to look back on and to know and learn from. I always say, you look back, you look up, and you move forward. Yeah, well, the past has made me what I am today, and I'm grateful exactly. for that. But I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to sit and, like, rehash it. You can't live in the past. You can't dwell in the past. I agree. Right. So it's just basically move forward, right? Move forward, right? Move forward. You know? Bullied at school, move forward. Low self-esteem, move forward, right? Uh, two marriages, move forward, right? Uh, a, a business that you gave up, move forward. Why Why keep talking about this and going over it? It doesn't matter. It's not going to achieve anything. Again, it's in the past. M get over it, right? You're responsible for your own life. Move on, right? Pull your big boy pants up, move on, and, and do what you feel is necessary, right? If I was to sit here and dwell on, right, when I went to school, when I was... Um, 11 years of age up until 15 when I left school because you leave school in England at 16. Well, you did when I uh, wow, 16. Was. Yeah, and you decide whether you want to uh, stay on. Uh, it's called the lower six and the upper six. I went to comprehensive school. So if I would sit and dwell on something that I allowed my uh, peers uh you know, my, my peers and being bullied to that, that stopped me that, well, I stopped myself because I allowed those thoughts and what they were saying and the bullying, because I thought the bullying was going to intensify because they were saying that you, if you do drama, because they were forced into doing drama and they didn't like it. They said that guys that do drama are gay, they're queer, right? There's something wrong with them. You know, all this dancing and prancing around. Stereotype, and, yeah. You know, um, and, uh, you know, I, um, I didn't do it. I, I really did wish that I would have carried on doing drama through school. And I wish that having, uh, leaving school, I probably could have gone to, I would, should have gone to college for it, or maybe joined a theater group and stuff like that. Yeah. But I again, can definitely see that you have that gift. You know, I, uh, you, you know, I allowed that. I mean, even when I was in the, you know, in some plays and stuff like that, I got flack for it, right? People hated on me, right? So I stopped myself because of this. And I'm telling people here, whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to do in life, do not allow anyone to stop you. Go and do it. Go yeah. and do it because Especially it's all right turning around and thing. saying, what you if, look, what if I'd have done this? What if I'd done that? Right. If you want to be an entertainer, go and entertain, go and do it, go and do what you love doing. And don't let anybody stop you or shut you down from doing it. Right. Because some people have had some really, really great ideas. There's a lot of dead ideas in the cemetery. People have taken a lot of really good ideas and, and, and a lot of things that they wanted to do, and they've died with them. They're in the cemetery. 
don't don't allow it to do it to you. Whatever you love doing, whatever you want to do and love doing, love doing it and do it and try and make a career out of it. That's my advice to anybody. Whatever it is you yeah. want to do in life, get off your ass and do it. Do it. And don't let anybody stop you. It's like that Queen song. Don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. Just get up and do it. Do it. Don't let yeah. nobody stop you. Do and it. This is what I think is going to be great for when you can have more time in your home and here. And this is what motivation is. And this is what is important that people put themselves out to people like you that can continue to put the positivity in them. You have to surround yourself with positive positive environment you have to be able to listen to someone like james who is willing to pull you out of the mess that you might be in you know um sometimes it is hard to tell it to ourselves so if we hear it from someone else that is more positive then we need to place ourselves within those people you become what you think you become what you think. And if you think that you can't do this, if you're putting obstacles in your way, if you're allowing others and certain people, right, to stand in your way, then, and you're thinking about that, then you're never going to do it, right? Have you thought about doing like a podcast for stuff like this? I think it's practically more or less in every single uh, live stream that I talk about. There's little gems. I know that uh, Lockhead Boss Lady, when she used to be in my live streams all the way through and she used to be listening to what I was saying, she would be, wow, that's just another gem that James has just handed me. Wow, wow, that's just another gem. You know, she always used to say that. Anybody yeah, that was there would make your channel be James Jams. <laughs> James Gems. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, just just um just do what you want to do and be happy. Try and find a way. If you're happy doing something, right? If you're happy doing something and you love doing it, if you're happy live your life. You clap your hands. <laughs> you know, love yourself and live your life. Be happy doing what you want to do, right? And just do it. Try and figure out a way to make money doing it. Yeah. What about? Um, there's some comments in the chat. Have, I don't know if you want to read them. They're, they're aimed that? at me, but there's some comments in the chat. Oh, yeah. That's definitely they're, they're, back. Yeah. They're, some of them are at me. I don't know if I, I just saw the chat scroll by. Let's see here. We were doing birthdays. Gemma. Gemma Grace says, James Cox, are you planning to do more vlogs on your channel? I would like to see you on a daily basis doing different things. You want to tackle that one? Um, I live stream every day. Uh, are you talking about just making vlog videos, talking about things? Uh, but I live stream. I regard my live streams as my vlogs, you know. Animated adventure. Nope, no question, but I love the beard, brother. Glad to see you energetic. Enzo yep. says, this is not a question, but just wanted to say thank you for keeping up the dedication with what you do. Thank you, Enzo. S2W Themes. Uh, let's go. Oh, Linda House of Chills is here. Hello. Welcome, Linda. How are you doing, Linda? Um, Enzo, it's James Cox. It's never too late. I'm doing exactly what I wanted behind the scenes. So if you have here. Do you have community theater where you are? Or there's probably different things that you could get involved in if you're still interested in doing theater. Uh, my my act is here on YouTube. That's that's where my act uh, is going to be, um, where I want it to be. I mean, I could do, I could possibly do theater. I could possibly look into that. But realistically, I want to be, you know, on YouTube doing this live streaming making videos and stuff like that that's what you I do have do. a great voice and you've definitely got a theater voice so thank you you thank could you. you definitely should consider sharing that with others even if you if you do it on youtube you know i love community theater as well i i get involved in different plays in our town as well and i love to sing so it's it's something fun and sometimes you, you need to look into it like at a community college sometimes they'll put on theaters where you can go audition and you know it's a four or five week time frame to commit to, but it's very fulfilling. You should look into that. You'd be oh, great I just, thank you. I just thought on, there is another affirmation that I say almost every morning 
and that is because the universe is energy right i say i am energy i am energized i am energy i am energized and i must repeat this well over a hundred times and oh, then wow. throughout my day i i get to find my energy and sometimes i forget to say it when i'm finding myself to get a little bit tired but if you keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again uh you will um you know find that that will happen um are there days when you're in your live stream and you're shouting out these things are those days when you're needing to say it more um because there are some days where you go all out and i and that's where i've like i'm wondering if he's saying that to himself <laughs> I mean, I know you're I'd say, yeah, I say a lot, a, a lot of this stuff I'm saying to myself and I'm hoping that people pick up on that and then mm -hmm. realize that they can do this too, right? They can do this too. And uh, so I, I have people I've noticed they come and they leave comments on my channel also on my videos and they say, man, I love your energy. Where'd you get all that energy from, man? You're pumped. I mean, especially when somebody, I you agree. know, super chats or makes a paypal donation and i know that i've got one you know um i break into song as you know saying super chat me one more time or it's you know it's raining manner you know so yeah i think that when you know how happy you are within you do, you also you also feel the happiness from other people when they're happy because if people aren't happy when they see you happy, then that means they're not happy with themselves. Yeah. I'll let you into a story a few weeks back and I'm not gonna let you know where it is. There was a young man and he's huffing and puffing and I could see he was red in the face. And um, he says that he, as I asked him, I said, are you okay? And he said, uh, um, no, I think I'm having a, anxiety attack i don't know what's going on in my head and i'm like come over here and sit down and he sat down and i said so you're having a anxiety attack what are the thoughts you know going through your mind right now do, I, do you want to do you want to tell me i mean it's okay if you don't if you don't want to tell me that's fine and he he paused for a while and um he said, well, I, I, I feel cut off from my family. I feel as though they uh, no longer, you know, want, want me in their lives. And um, I don't really have any friends. I don't have um, any communication with anybody. And, you know, I've just recently been to the doctor. I think he said like two, two, three weeks ago. Away, uh, ago. And the doctor put him on some uh, depression medicine. And um, since taking this, that he, you know, wasn't feeling, you know, himself. He, he feels like way different and like is becoming more anxious. And I told him, I said, well, you know, uh, you might want to go back to the doctor, but it's entirely up to you and tell the doctor how you're feeling since you've been on this medication. And then I started explaining to him that, you know, the only person realistically that he's got in his life that can really fix his problem is himself. And I started mm -hmm. explaining to him that what he's doing is he's thinking about all the bad things where basically he should be thinking about good things, all the things that he has in his life that are great for us. So you have a roof over your head, right? And it's like, yeah. I said, you have a job, right? And it's like, yeah. And I uh, said, you have food and you don't need to go for food. And I thought, you know, you, you're not wanting for food. You've got food. He's like, yeah. And I said, um, you know, do you have a car? And he's like, yeah. I said, do you, do you drive? And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, may I ask you again? And, you know, if I'm being too intrusive, just, just let me know. Um, do you ever go for walks out in the country? He said, well, where could I do this here? And I explained, there's a, there's a lake over here with, you know, you can come drive down here and walk there's woods and stuff like that and i explained to him you know go and spend some time in nature and you know this not the other and uh, uh, you know i did speak about some other things which then started to make him laugh i don't want to elaborate wow um, you really had a purpose that day um, 
on on the show uh, what I said to him. And uh, he uh, started to laugh and everything. And uh, I sat there with him for another like 30 minutes. And uh, I noticed that the color came back. The redness in his face had gone off his, off his, off his face. Wow. And, and I was just talking to him and I said to him, you know, how are you feeling now? He says, I feel, I feel a little be bit better now that you sat down and explained a few things to me and that, you know, um, that somebody really does care. I said, yeah, I care for you. I care for you, brother. Do you, do you mind if I give you a hug? Aww. And he's, and he says, he says, no. And I gave, I gave him a hug. And I said, you feel all right? I said, you know, you know where I am, right? And he says, yeah. I said, so, you know, anytime that you want to come and talk to me, you know, come and, come and talk to me. I'm, I'm, in, I'm here for you. And I saw him the next day and I said, how do you feel? And I said, you know what? I listened to what you said. I went home. I looked those things up on the internet. I talked about affirmations with him. I looked him up. I said a few to myself. He said, I felt a little bit crazy. Like you said, I would staring in the mirror and telling myself yeah. that I love you. And That's you great. Know, you're, the, you're the greatest person on this planet. And, you know, and all this stuff. So a little bit crazy. And, but I'm going to go home and I'm going to do it again, you know, uh, tomorrow. And I, I said, I just want to thank you. And he says, is there anything I can buy you? Can I buy you some food or something like that? Pay, you know, my gratitude back. I said, no. I said, just, you know, if you feel as though you don't need to be on the medication, go and talk to your doctor and explain to him what's going on. You know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell you to stop taking the medication. I can tell you that years ago I was on certain medications and I took myself off them because I just didn't feel right, you know. And um, it's, but it's That's up really to you. cool that you were able to step in and help him have a different perception. Yeah, you do. Um, Angel wants to know if he can ask if he can give you a kiss on his forehead. <laughs> oh, you can always give me a kiss on my forehead. <laughs> no, Thank that you, is Angel. a great story. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming this is a true story. It is a true story. Yeah. It is absolutely is true. That was really kind of you. Angel, Angel just said, it's very kind of you to take the time for that young man. Yeah. You know, I, it is important to be heard. We all need a voice. We all need someone to listen to us. And that's what my goal is for Real Talk, because I also feel like I have a, a purpose and a time to be able to do this and to let people come and, and talk to me. And I, me I, have, I have a question for you. Do you know what the purpose of life is? There's a lot of purposes in life. I have to ask God every day what my purpose is. But, but what what is the purpose of life? I don't know the answer that you want to tell me, but my purpose is to love. The purpose of life is to have a life of purpose. <laughs> the purpose of life is to have a life of purpose. Absolutely. What's the book? A life given a life driven purpose. Uh, there's a book about that. There was a movie on based on that book too. Uh, Angel probably knows the title of it. Say every day I try to make a difference in myself and I try to help others. I, you know. Hey Jack, uh, thanks for coming. Hey Jack Dawson, how you doing? And uh, it's like when I'm working at Walmart and I'm helping people. There are people that are afraid of using the purpose-driven you know, life. That's the, the book. self the self checkout machines, right? They're, they're afraid of them. They think they're going to make a mistake. So they line up and they stand there. You know, there's only one register open with a person scanning people's stuff. And when you get somebody that's got, you know, a cart or two people in line that's got carts and they're full with stuff, like 200 items, it's going to take time for you to get out. So what I do is say, um, I can help you get out of here faster. Do you want to get out of here faster or, or do you want to carry on standing in line? They normally keep the tobacco line, lane open because, right. um, you know, people want cigarettes. And um, I say, I, I can help you. Well, well, how are you going to do that? You're going to open a register online? No, I'm going to take you down self-checkout and I'm going to scan all your items. And basically, you're just going to pay just like a cashier. You know, you would be paying the cashier. And well, oh, I don't like those machines. They take away jobs and this and that. And I get into a conversation with them about it, which basically turns the old attitude around because the machines don't take away jobs. People don't want to show up for work. And so Walmart puts these machines in to alleviate the frustration for those that do want to check themselves out 
right, to um, do that so they don't have to stand in line for 40 minutes getting checked out. So I explain what's going on and I'm scanning their information, you know, I'm scanning their items and they say at the end, they say, I am so grateful that you helped me today. Thank you so much. And I say, thank you for shopping at Walmart. Yeah, you have, you I do the time. I do the Walmart pickup and I've had somebody say, you're taking away somebody's, you know, you're taking away. I'm like, I'm providing a job. They're going out and shopping for me. <laughs> right. I need to run to the restroom real quick. Can I do that? We can probably wrap up. I usually try to okay. keep these within an hour or so. I don't know how, how long, long we've been on here. Uh, we it's one thirty, so we've been doing an hour and a half here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. That's I'm gonna go get I'm myself good. some food too. All that. That's because I'm the greatest. <laughs> I'm here showing people how great I am, right? Are you gonna go yeah. live later, James? I, I've got some stuff. I might make a video later about something. I don't know. I I need to get something done, and I only have like today tomorrow and saturday to get it done i've been working on it but um yeah, yeah I, I, I really I need it i really need to go car. but anyway yeah. i want to say this to everybody everybody here i am so happy and grateful that you guys have showed up here to miss kathy's live stream thank you so much thank you for being here i'm grateful for every single one of you please keep spreading the message right about our community we really do have a community of kindness right Let's be kind to others. Let's pay that kindness forward. Let's motivate others. Let's be there for people that uh, are that want our support. It's not a need uh, when it comes to YouTube. It's a want, but in needs of people where you know they need our help, where they truly do need our help. Let's let's try and be there for them for that. But I greatly appreciate every single one of you that have been. Here today, you guys are really amazing. Hashtag always be amazing. Hashtag always be awesome. And always be hashtag I'm a creator. Don't forget, guys. Hashtag I'm a creator equals hashtag pay it forward. So pay it forward and make somebody happy. Even if it's just you watching their video in full, liking it, tweeting it out, adding it to your playlist, and commenting down below that you did all that. And encourage as many people to do this on YouTube. Yeah, and, and I remember, think James agrees with me as we both, we want to show you how great you are. Yes, you are great. Everybody here is the greatest, and you are showing everybody how great you are. And thank you so much. Yay. I love you. Miss Kathy, I'm thank coming. you so much for having me on your live stream. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much. And with that said, peace, flip flops, Gandhi, and all that good stuff. James has got to. Run to the restroom. Thanks so much, one? James. Thank you for coming, everyone. And if you are interested in a real talk, find my uh, link uh, to Twitter in the description box below. Also, check out James. If you're not familiar with his channel, then his link is also in the description box. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. And goodbye, 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 goodbye. goodbye.